Hey guys, my name's Tommy and welcome back to Through the Lens. Today we're going to be talking about the Graflex Anniversary Speed Graphic. Let's get into it. Some variety of the Graflex Speed Graphic has been available from 1912 to 1973. Now they range from a number of negative sizes, ranging from two and a quarter by three and a quarter, three and a quarter by four and a quarter, four by five, and five by seven inch negatives. This one is the most common size, four by five. This is an anniversary speed graphic, which was produced from 1940 to 1946, and this one is 1946 dated. The speed graphic was heavily used by journalists from the early to mid 1900s and some of the most iconic photographs of all time were taken using a speed graphic. Now, before we get into the history of it, I'll show you how it works. The speed graphic closes up for easy storage and to open it up there's a hidden button on the top that you push and the front swings down and locks into place. There's a little arm that you pull on, it locks onto the rails, you push it to the side to lock it on and now it's open and ready to go. There are two ways to focus this camera. First, you can focus through the ground glass. Now, the film holder needs to be pulled out of the camera and the lens needs to be locked open, as well as the focal plane shutter being set on open. Now, you push this knob on the back and the ground glass flap pops open. Now, you can just look on the ground glass and use the knob up front until your image is in focus. You can also focus it new style, and this is how I prefer to focus it. You focus new style by looking at the rangefinder mounted on the side. Now it works the same as any other rangefinder. You look through it, and the, there's two disjointed images, and you s turn the knob up front until the two images lined up, and once they're lined up, you know you're in focus. These are a huge pain to calibrate. Maybe I can go into it in, an, in another video if you guys would like, but. If, these range finder, if this rangefinder isn't calibrated to the lens that you have on it when you buy it, it's going to be a doozy getting this calibrated. There are two ways you can take a picture on this camera. You can use the shutter mechanism up front or you can use the focal plane shutter over toward the back. Now let's start with the front. This one has a Zeiss Tessar lens on it and it works the same as any other Zeiss lens. It has a, a ring around the, around the outside that you can rotate to select your shutter speed. There's a cocking lever up top, you cock the, the shutter, and when you're ready to fire, there's a little lever on the side that you pull down. Or you can attach a cable shutter release and do it that way, that's the more common way with these speed graphics. That's not my preferred method of using this camera, my preferred method is actually using the focal plane shutter. To use the focal plane shutter, you have to lock the lens up front open so the light just shines straight through. Now, the focal plane shutter is a strip of fabric that's at the back of the camera that has a series of slits cut into it. Now, the wider the slit is, the slower the speed will be. And there's letters A through D to uh, denote the size of that slit. A is a really wide slit, and D is a very narrow slit. And combining the slit size with the spring tension, which is on the bottom, there's a table on the side that tells you all this information, you can set it from a tenth of a second to a thousandth of a, thousandth of a second, which was pretty impressive for cameras back in the day. Now to set spring tension, there is a small knob on the bottom of the side of the camera, and there is a little window where you can see what setting it's set at. This one is set at three right now. If I wanted to increase it, I would spin this twice, and now it's set to four. If I wanted to go back to three, there's a little lever right here, and I'd push it twice and it would take me back to three. And to fire this camera, there's a little lever right here. You just pull down on that, and you just use the camera. Again, there are two ways to frame up your shot on this camera. You can use the wireframe viewfinder, which folds up, and you can look through this piece back here, through the piece up front, and that's how you frame up your shot. Or you can look through the viewfinder on the top right here. Now, it has several inserts which you can put into the front depending on what kind of film you're shooting in it or what kind of lens you have on it. This one just has the standard all the way open. 
and I never really use this one anyway, I really like the wireframe viewfinder, but those are the two options for viewfinders. Now I'm going to show you how to actually put all those steps together and use this camera to take a picture. You're going to want to get yourself a film holder. This is a 4x5 film holder. It holds two pictures, one on either side, and they're covered by what are called dark slides. You would never want to remove your dark slide in the light unless it's loaded into your camera or unless it's in a dark bag or a completely dark room. No red lights unless it's orthochromatic film. I'm just pulling this one out because this is a piece of demonstration film and I don't care if it gets exposed. Anyway, this is what your 4x5 frame will look like inside of your film holder. Now the top flaps open like this and that's how you uh, remove and put in film into your film holder. Now you're going to want every sheet of 4x5 film has a little notch in the top right corner. Each film stock is different, but this one has a couple little bumps and a little U-shaped groove. Now you're going to want to, when you're in the dark and you want to load this, let's pretend we're in the dark, you open up your box of 4x5 film and you pull out a sheet of 4x5 film. Make sure that the groove is in the top right hand corner and you're going to want to just guide the film into the holder. You can feel it when it catches on both sides. Now do a little pull test. Make sure that the film has gone into both channels on either side. If you're all good, you fold it back over, reinsert the dark slide, and you've loaded one half of your film holder. Just repeat the same process on the other side, and your film holder is completely loaded. Now you can close up your box of 4x5 film and take it all out into the light. Now this is what you'll have. To load this into your camera, this camera is equipped with a spring back. There's a lot of different types of Graflex backs for these cameras, which would go into another video of its own. I'm just going to focus on the spring back because A, that's what I have, and B, that's what's most common. So you're going to want to take your film holder, pull back on the back slightly, just enough to get it in, and push it in. It'll lock in pretty good. Now when you're ready to take the picture, make sure your uh, focal plane shutter settings are set or make sure your traditional shutter is closed and ready to go. Now you at this point you can only focus using the rangefinder. You can't focus using the traditional method because if you try to look through the ground glass, the film holder is going to block you. So remove the dark slide look through the viewfinder and take the picture. Now once you're done you're going to want to rotate the, the dark slide and put it back in black side facing out. The black side facing out means that that frame has just been exposed. Now to take the other picture you just remove the film holder, flip it around, insert it back into the back, reset your focal plane shutter, remove the dark slide, look through the viewfinder and take the other picture. Flip it around, put it back in, and now you have just used two frames of 4x5 film. Once your film is all processed, you can put it into an archival sheet like this and put it away into your film binder. Now there are a lot of different companies that still produce 4x5 film and there's a lot of different companies that still develop 4x5 film. You check your local area for your local film lab. If you don't have a local film lab, there are a few alternatives online. Do your own research, figure out which one's best for you, or you can home process it. Now there's a number of ways that you home process 4x5 film. I use a vintage 4x5 developing tank which I got from my school. There's a couple of 3D printed options out there. There's a couple options you can buy. There's some links in the description to some helpful information. As I stated before, these were pretty much the standard camera for photojournalists from the early to mid 1900s. A lot of the world's most famous and iconic pictures were taken using speed graphic and a selection of which will be on screen right now, including Marines raising the flag on Iwo Jima. Speaking of World War II, the speed graphic was actually used a lot during World War II by the Signal Corps to document the war. It was distributed to many of their still photographers and many of them were issued special uh, military versions of these cameras. Now the chrome parts would have been replaced with black parts, though that was the same for the civilian model. But the military model had 
a signal core identification tag on the top or on the rails or somewhere on the camera and instead of being covered in black uh, leather it would be wrapped in OD green. This is a recent addition to my collection and so far I'm absolutely loving it. I don't take this camera out often because it's, it pretty much costs a dollar a picture and even more once you factor in uh, processing costs. But whenever the opportunity arises, I love to take this camera out and use it. It's a little cumbersome to use. Some aren't going to like that. Some would just prefer uh, a 35mm SLR or something like that. But I like the process of using this. If you want to get your hands on one of these cameras, it's probably going to cost you quite a bit if you're looking online. Online, the more affordable end of the spectrum is about $150 to $200, and it all depends on the model of the camera. This is, this is the anniversary speed graphic, but they have uh, pacemaker speed graphics, century speed graphics. You're going to have to do your own research on what model you're going to want to pick up. Now, you're also going to want to check secondhand stores and estate sales. You never know what you might find when you walk into one. There's some pretty good stories of people walking in and finding these for about 50 bucks, and that's an absolute steal. Kodak and Ilford are still producing 4x5 film. It's available pretty readily. It costs about $50 for a box of 50 black and white pictures. Color film may be different. I haven't shot any color film on my speed graphic yet, so I wouldn't know. Uh, for processing, again, check your local area for labs or go online and do some of your own research. And that's pretty much it for the speed graphic. Now, moving on to what I've been working on for the last few weeks. I recently bought this big box of 35mm slides, and they're all from the 50s, and I've been going through and scanning them. I've gotten some really cool pictures. If you want to see what I've got so far, you can follow me on Instagram. There's probably a link in the description, and my handle's on the screen right now. Now, I found a cartridge of Kodachrom, or a cartridge of Kodacolor, and some 35mm Kodachrome in the cameras that I bought there. Now, the chemical process for developing Kodachrome isn't available anymore, but I am aware that you can develop Kodachrome as black and white as opposed to uh, color positive, which is what it was meant to be. But I haven't found a place that would develop Kodachrome 35mm film uh, black and white. Now, if anybody's aware of uh, somewhere that can process this film for me, please let me know. I would really appreciate that. Now, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.